Japanese drive a deep wedge into the British lines, forcing them to retreat. Soon the entire city is within the range of the Japanese artillery. Within five days, the Japanese capture the reservoirs and cut off the city's water supply. General Yamashita wanted to take the city of Singapore without a fight because he knew that his troops were inferior in number to the defenders. And so the first thing they did was have planes fly over that dropped literally boxes that contained appeals to surrender, basically saying there's no reason to have a battle in which we're going to kill a lot of civilians. You should give up to save the women and children that are in the city. If you don't, I will order an annihilation attack on the city of Singapore. Three days later, a warning, you know, you'd better come to meet me to talk about surrender terms or else. Churchill orders his generals to defend Singapore to the death. Surrender, he says, is out of the question. We never had enough time to be worried or anything like that. No city got, got there and there was, you know, it was in the far in the far line, but it only lasted for a couple of days. I think it took about five days for a car to come from the top of Malaya to Singapore, and the Japs done it in three. for several days, the British are finally beginning to realize the depth of Japanese penetration into their defenses. All the guns, etc., were pointing out to sea, and the Japs come in the back, <laughs> and therefore they couldn't reverse the guns. Or trouble was they were being cut off, you see. Actually, as, it, as, we, as we were supposed to be fighting the front line, another wave came and came to the back of them. Of the, of troops eventually they had no chance at all. Finally, the British commanders agree that with the water supply nearly gone, short on food, gasoline and their troops exhausted, counterattack is impossible. Everything, all the service and everything was on the on Malayan mainland. And that's, that's for one reason they were cut off for water and everything, everything the people were. But when it stopped, well, actually it was glad it was over in one way because it was over and done with. It's got to be one of the most unusual encounters ever. It was held in a bank, in an old-fashioned bank. They had a cage, like for the tellers to be in there when people had the money. They met inside this cage to talk and negotiate the surrender. General Percival thought he could, he could buy a little time, and Yamashita just wouldn't hear that. You've got to surrender. You can have only 1,000 men who have any kind of arms. You've got to surrender as hostages to maintaining the terms of the surrender. The Governor General of Singapore, plus all of the high command of the British Armed Forces. General Yamashita must have regarded this whole operation as a colossal gamble. The British have a superior number of troops. He doesn't. He's low on ammunition. Can he make this face-to-face -face encounter work? And he did. Yamashita tells Percival to say nothing except yes or no. The answer is yes. On February 15th, 1942, Singapore falls to the Japanese. It's 130,000 prisoners of war. A significant number of them were sent north as forced laborers to help build the railway from Thailand into Burma. 
the, the infamous bridge on the River Kwai. They linger in memory in Australia because of the belief there that the British High Command didn't do all that it could have done to keep them from becoming prisoners. Well, I was a bit concerned what would happen, you know, and everything for the future. Of course, your parents, too, you know, that's what you think of it most. We just took it for granted as prisoners of war, and that was it. You can expect anything, you know. Instead of the traditional victory parade, Yamashita orders his men to pass through the city in silence, carrying boxes containing ashes of the dead. I think the best way to sum up what the victory at Singapore meant to the Japanese people, army, everybody involved, is the name they gave the city. When they captured the city, they renamed it Shonan. Sho is the, the, the character, the first syllable for the first part of the emperor's formal name, Showa. It means enlightened. Nan is the word for south. So this was the Japanese liberators coming to enlighten and free the city of Singapore from its British colonial oppressors. It means that the Japanese have a base of operations from which they can conduct all kinds of operations, intelligence operations, military operations, naval operations uh, in Southeast Asia. It's a sense, again, of tremendous pride to have done this, a terrific boost to morale at home. The campaign to take Malaya and Singapore will cost the Japanese over 3,500 dead and over 6,000 wounded. The 130,000 prisoners of war would be treated with appalling cruelty and inhumanity by their captors, a constant reminder of the fall of Singapore. The British have spent nearly 20 years building the fortress of Singapore. The Japanese are able to conquer it in 70 days. At this point, it looks like the Japanese are assured of victory in the war. But the British fighting spirit will be buoyed in the coming months by the rebuilt American Navy and a push to retake the Pacific. <laughs>